when the prophets get it wrong or prophecy is not fulfilled, do you remain silent? Do you do this? Is this what you have to do? Are you able, according to the word of God, to question those prophecies, to figure out what's going on, to ask questions? We have a right. What I'm going to start with today, because I think he's going to be coming on for a while, what I'm going to start with today is I'm going to read the scriptures in regards to prophets, because first of all, I do not want to say anything that is not in the word of God, because then you don't take it out on me, you can contact God and tell him personally. Before we get started, I have a few comments I want to make. The first comment I want to make is, I am not a liberal whatever that means. I, I'm not in any party. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal or, or a conservative. I voted for President Trump twice. The reason that I voted for him had nothing to do with his character because, you know, sometimes he tweeted just and said a few things I wasn't real fond of, but I was absolutely blessed at his policies. I love what he did for veterans. I think it's absolutely amazing what he did for uh, prison reform. I love the way he's handled so many things. This tonight is not about Donald Trump. It's about prophecies that are being spoken by various people that are not being fulfilled. So in order to understand how to judge this, we have to go to God's word. I also want you to understand I am not, I have no vendettas. I'm not against anybody. I don't have anything to, to accuse people of. These are things, hear me now, that have been said in public forums all over YouTube, all over broadcasting, all over Twitter, all over Facebook. They are public forums forums. So I'm not gossiping. Please let's stop at the gossiping and judging every time somebody says something we don't like. It hasn't anything to do with that. So I'm going to go straight to the scriptures, my precious friends, and I'm going to read to you what the scriptures say in regards to prophets, because I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm really getting concerned about the condition of the body of Christ. There are so many people Please understand, I have an international ministry. My contacts overseas, through Messenger, YouTube, all different things that I'm in contact with, are t people are telling me, I don't even know what to believe anymore. I'm confused. My goal here tonight is not to attack or put somebody down or get on somebody's, uh, you know, try to attack. I simply want to clarify some things according to the word of God. Okay, and so then when I present things, you can take it up with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'm going to start right here. I'm going to read you some scriptures. And please don't let your attention wander while I'm reading these scriptures, because these are very important. Prophecy is talked about throughout the Bible. You might say that, um, you know, um, it's in probably several books. Let me read it to you, okay? Deuteronomy, if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken, when a prophet speaks it in the name of the Lord and the word does not come to pass, he is a liar. Ooh, awa, awa, okay? This is God talking. Um, Matthew, Jesus Christ talking. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And I will say, I didn't know you. Ezekiel, my hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations to my people. Luke, woe to you when all people speak well of you, so for their fathers did that to the false prophets. Jeremiah, and the Lord said to me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I didn't send them, nor did I command them to speak. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the word of God. As I said, precious saints, take it up with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I'm just reading it. Jesus said on that, I covered that. Let me go over here. Peter, 
but false prophets will arise among the people. And just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, so Ezekiel and her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions, seeing false visions throughout the entire word of God. My Bible's here somewhere. Here it is. Throughout the entire word of God, prophecy is discussed from the beginning to the end. And Jeremiah clearly says that the Lord said, and I'll read it later to you, that if the prophecy is prophesied and it is not fulfilled, they are liars. According to the word of God, according to the word of God, in those days, they were killed. So I'm not saying we need to go out and kill anybody. And again, I'm going to keep saying this. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with the Holy Ghost. I got it from here. Okay. Talk to him. Okay, precious saints. Here it is in Ezekiel. They have envisioned false things and false divination. They say, thus saith the Lord. But the Lord did not send them that they hoped that their word might be confirmed. You have not seen a vision, and you have spoken falsely about me. Jesus Christ, on more than one occasion, started with false prophets when he was getting ready to leave. In the middle, he said what was going to happen on the earth, and he ended with false prophets and false teachers. He never once said, if you should find this going on, don't concern yourself. Stand back and do this. And that's the problem. People are afraid to say anything. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there is a scripture, and I'm going to just bust this wide open for you, that says, touch not my anointed, do no harm to my prophets. Now, let's find out why that was said and what God meant. First of all, it was said in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22. The patriarchs and the nation of Israel was traveling, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stay with me, because we're going to bust this thing up. From through different nations as they were forming, as God was forming Israel through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They were going from kingdom to kingdom, from nation to nation. You can go research this yourself. And God spoke that they are not to be harmed in the case of um, Abraham. He said to his wife, Sarah, you're beautiful. If they see you, they'll kill me. That is an applicable scripture to do not touch or harm my prophets. If you read it there, and I will to you, it never meant once that you in the New Testament cannot say that is a false, prof pro false prophecy. You cannot say that this individual said something on a public forum that never came to pass, that huge amounts of people followed and trusted and are now falling away. So what are you saying, Carol? We should attack these people? No, we should discuss what they said to put the majority of people that are in bondage to false visions, false prophecies, and false hope at, at rest. And that's what I'm here to do. I talk to so many people, and they, so many are going, I don't get it anymore. I don't understand anymore. I don't even know what I believe anymore. Why not? When are the prophets telling the truth? And I today just want very much to bring to you that you have every right in the world to discuss what does not be fulfilled. Okay? Now, touch not my prophets, do no, no, touch not my anointed, do no harm to my prophets. Let, let me tell you where that came from too with David, King David. Saul the king was pursuing David to kill him. He was jealous because Samuel the prophet, get all this, told Saul the king, the kingdom's been ripped from you. It's going to David. So Saul was totally angry about that, and he sought to kill David. 
Many times he came very close to killing David. He threw javelins at him. He did everything he could to absolutely kill David. So David was running in fear of King Saul. One particular night, David and his friend had access to where King Saul and his men were sleeping. David came in with his javelin and Saul was knocked out cold. He was tired. And his friend said, kill him. He's been trying to kill you. Do him in. Do it now. And David said, should I touch God's anointed? That's touch, harm, harm, hands, not voice, not talk. Touch, should I harm God's anointed and not be guilty? On another opportunity, finally Saul died on Mount Gilboa, fell on his own sword, and David was now the king. Stay with me, you don't want to miss this. And a runner happened to see, a guy happened to see Saul dead. He thought, I'm going to go tell David that King Saul's dead. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell him I killed him, and maybe David will really be impressed with me. So this guy came to David, stood before King David, and said, Saul and Jonathan are dead. And David said, what do you mean? He said, well, I did you a favor, so to speak, and I killed him. When I killed him. And David said, should you touch God's anointed, because Saul had been anointed with the oil of Samuel to be king, or... Can, can you possibly be guiltless for having killed the prophet? Because Saul did prophesy at times. So now David executes the guy that came and said, I, had, I killed him. Because P David made clear, you cannot touch. Touch is here. This is voice. This is touch. Touch or harm God's anointed. Nowhere in the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, does it say anything about confronting someone, calling someone out, repeating something that was said that never even happened. Nowhere in Scripture, especially in the New Testament. Back it up, Carol. I will. Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, was persecuting the church. He was putting people that believed in Jesus in bondage, in jail. He was on his horse riding to Damascus to get more documents to persecute more Christians. As you know, he gets knocked off his horse. Jesus confronts him and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? In that moment, Saul had a theophany, which is an awakening to Jesus Christ, knowing he is the Lord and he gets up and he's no longer wants to be Saul of Tarsus, he becomes Paul the Apostle. Now watch, after 14 years in Arabia, in a cave, he finally goes to Jerusalem. And when he gets to Jerusalem, he talks to Peter and he talks to James, kind of a Jerusalem conference, uh, uh, council, so to speak. And they know he was an abuser of the church. They knew that until his conversion. Watch where I'm going with this. So Peter was a pretty... I would say he's a pretty important guy. Paul was called to the Gentiles. That's you and me unless you're a Jew. Peter was called to the Jews. Well, Peter didn't want to eat with the Gentiles because he considered them unclean. Even after Peter was told that don't call something unclean that I call clean, God said to Peter, Peter still played the hypocrite. He still would go with Paul and eat with the Gentiles and smile and be happy. And then when he went back to the Jews in Jerusalem, Peter would not eat with the Gentiles. Paul comes up to Peter, and you'll read it in the letters, and says to him, you're a hypocrite. He said in the letter, I rebuked him right to his face. You know why? Because he was wrong. I don't see anywhere in the scripture where Peter turned around and said, do you know who you're talking to? I'm God's anointed. You know, you are a persecutor of the church. I got some flack. I got some, you know, I got some stuff going on. I'm a pretty important guy. You just touched God's anointed and did harm to his prophets. Never said it. You know why? Because it's not applicable to the New Testament. We are not put in a... I won't do it, folks. I will not do it. When I read about the last days and I see what's coming and how we've been told over and over that things are going to happen and that there's going to be false prophets and false teachers, 
I don't know about you, but I'm not into the celebrity. I never was. I never will be. I love that scripture that Paul said. He said, I went to Jerusalem to those that were supposed to be of some reputation. It meant nothing to me. I know exactly how you feel, Paul. I'm not into celebrity in Christianity, and I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not into patting anybody on the back and thinking that they're in a higher position because they use the badge that you of touch not my anointed, do no harm to my prophets, because they throw that out there, and then that puts them in a position that you can't say anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if I get up here and prophesy something and it don't come to pass, I don't care how many people like me. I need to be rebuked. I need to be called out and I need to be told your prophecy, Carol Konacki, did not go come to pass. Therefore, it's question if you're a prophet. So what I'm going to do tonight, now that we've realized that touch not my anointed, do no harm, touch not, harm, harm, harm. That's what it meant. It was for that time for the patriarchs in that day when they were traveling from nation to nation and kingdom to kingdom that God did not want them harmed. It was applicable where David again commented that he would not kill Saul because he was anointed to be a king by the oil that Samuel put upon his head. That scripture, and I can't emphasize this enough, is not applicable today. It's just not, folks. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say you cannot call these things out. Now, there's a number of ministers. And again, I'm not against anybody. I'm not trying to attack anybody. I'm not trying to say anything evil or unkind. Stop with the gossip and the judging when the Bible says judge the prophecy. And if I get in a public forum and say these things, then you have every right in the world to absolutely scrutinize, analyze, and judge what I say when I say God said it. Let me explain something to you. When you think about prophecy, okay, what is prophecy? First of all, you got to know what it is. It's just somebody rattling because that's all I hear these days. It's like God is babbling all over the place. And then there are prophets that are true prophets. True prophets, ladies and gentlemen. David Wilkerson was, to me, a true prophet. David wrote a book all the way back in, I don't know, 86 or something called The Vision, and we're watching it all come to pass. David Wilkerson ac uh, accurately prophesied the attack on the uh, towers. In fact, he canceled uh, meetings and conferences because he was aware that these things were coming. David Wilkerson, to me, was a prophet of our time. For some reason, everybody thinks we've got to have 190 of them. I think David's words, Pastor Wilkerson's words, he was killed in Plano, Texas, in a head-on collision. He's in heaven right now, but his words came to pass, and he took a lot of flack for him because he wasn't always preaching what everybody wants to hear. Now, let me share something in the book of Jeremiah, and you really got to pay attention to get this. Because this is where I want to go into the prophecies, the things that have been said, and how we deal with them when they're not fulfilled. Here's a story. Watch this. Je this is so good. Jeremiah was a prophet. We all know that. He truly was a prophet. And there was another prophet at the exact same time. I think his name was Han Han Hananiah. Hananiah his name was. So there was Jeremiah and Hananiah. They were both prophesying at the same time. Hananiah and Jeremiah were prophets during the, uh, when they were captives to Babylon. They were under the oppression. You don't want to miss this. Under the oppression of Babylon. They were ruled by a king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was paganistic. Everything about him was wrong. They were oppressed. And Jeremiah would come and speak. And Han Hananiah would come and speak. And Hananiah always wanted the people to hear what they wanted to hear. And he came out and he started to prophesy before the people during this oppression that they had destroyed, uh, ne Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, had destroyed the temple completely, took all the golden artifacts, destroyed the place where they worshiped the Lord. And they were under this great oppression. I want to emphasize that. And the Israel was like, oh my gosh, this is just so uncomfortable. We got to overthrow this. We got to get out of here. So uh, Hananiah came and said, listen, this is what the Lord would say to all the people. 
the Lord is going to break the yoke off your necks. He's going to remove Nebuchadnezzar and put back the king, the king of Judah. And all the articles in the temple are going to be returned again and everything's going to be peachy. So Jeremiah's listened to Han Hananiah give the prophecy and that's what he wants to hear and that's sure what the people want to hear. God is going to break the yoke. He's going to get rid of Nebuchadnezzar and he's going to bring back the old king of Judah and replace him right in there and everybody's going to be good and everything's going to be wonderful. So Jeremiah's like, that's cool. Okay, let it be done to you according to the words you have prophesied. And they leave. When they get outside, watch this. God says to Jeremiah, nah, go back in and tell him, thus saith the Lord. And he goes back and he says, Hananiah, this is what the Lord said. You have prophesied wrong. That is not what I said at all. You're saying what the people want to hear. I never said any of that. And then Jeremiah said to him that he would die. He told the prophet, you're going to die for lying to the people. Now that's in the Bible. I didn't make that story up. By the way, Hananiah told the people in his fake false prophecy because they wanted to hear it and because they thought if they could usurp all these people, get rid of the wicked. They were going to do it. If they, and then they put God into it. Well, God said, well, God said, Hananiah said, God said in two years, this is going to happen and the yoke is going to be broken and the wickedness is going to be removed and the old king is coming back in his place. Does that sound familiar to you? It does to me. And so... One of the things, and please understand this is not about politics and it's definitely not about Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump was a good president. I was grateful for the four years he led this country. I salute him. But what's going on now is starting to get scary, okay? So I'm gonna be real honest with you. I'm not gonna mention names unless I have to, but and I just really don't wanna do that. But I wanna help you to understand what God says when someone starts to prophesy. Now, I have to say this gentleman's name, and that's nothing to do with attacking him. You know, it's what he said. His name is Marcus Rogers, very nice young man. I'm sure he loves the Lord. But he got on an international set on YouTube, and this is what he said. You need to listen to the dream that I had and tell every Christian the dream that I had. Really? The dream that I had. And he said that in the dream that Biden is not going to be the president of the United States and that Trump will definitely be the president. God told me I had a dream. You need to tell everyone. And so Mr. Trump did not become the president. Now, I know what everybody's trying to say. Well, you know, God's timing and, you know, everybody moves the goalposts. Now, let's move the goalposts that God is not into dates and God is not into this and God is going to come in and do this and we're just going to hold on. And you really want to hear what I have to say at the end about all of this. And now it isn't November 3rd. Then it was going to be January 20th. Then it was going to be January 21st. And then it never happened at all. Nobody talked about the big thing that happened at the Capitol. None of the prophets mentioned that. They never mentioned the uh, plague that was coming. No one did. And please don't say they didn't because I've watched about 78 to 120 hours of stuff on YouTube before I ever did this. That's why it took me so long. No one prophesied about that. I should think the pandemic would have been first and foremost. Almost 400,000 people have died. And rather you believe in it or not, 400,000 people are dead. And if they had underlying problems, the pandemic helped to take them out sooner. So whatever the case is, that was not prophesied. The capital was not prophesied. And yet we were told by at least 12 different prophets that God told them specifically that Donald Trump would be the president of the United States. And as much as I wanted that, as much as I hoped for that, it didn't 
happen. And I am not into moving goalposts to a new date. I'm not into changing God's word when he didn't say it to begin with. He said in this word, and I read it to you, when they say something and it doesn't happen, it's not God. Prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, as I said earlier, is the spirit of God in the Old Testament came upon the prophets. Don't miss this. The spirit came upon the prophets and they prophesied. Word of God teaches us they didn't even know what they were saying. They were just obedient and they went babbling. And if Isaiah happened to be in the throne room, we're going to talk about this too. He said he fell on his face. He could hardly talk. The humility and the fear of God when Isaiah was in the throne room and his garment filled the temple. It just He just couldn't even talk. Today, people claim they go up there on trolleys and hang out and eat ice cream cones with God. I'm not going to hold back. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. It's an insult to our father. So the spirit of God would come on the prophet and they would prophesy. They didn't change the date. Then people go, well, they didn't know. They didn't have to. They didn't even know what they're talking about. They were just obedient. Isaiah with the birth of Jesus Christ, the government would be on his shoulders. Uh, uh, he would be born in Bethlehem. I mean, everything David prophesied about his beard ripping, being ripped out and dogs below him. All these prophetic utterances were coming. How did they get them? They got them by the whole, you don't want to miss this, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was talking. So if the Holy Spirit is talking, he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't rebuke people for not believing them when they were wrong. He does, as far as prophecy, when the Holy Spirit, do you understand who I'm talking about? This is the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, who moved over the waters of the deep and darkness, and God said, let there be light, and the Spirit moved, and there was light. The same Spirit that was came upon Jesus Christ in the Jordan, the same Spirit that they received at Pentecost, and you and I are filled with. So if the Holy Spirit came on them in the Old Testament, and they spoke by his instruction, that's a very sacred, sacred thing be careful. You heard what he said to Hananiah. Your life is going to be required of you because you know what you did, Hananiah? You said God spoke and he didn't. And you misled the people. That's what the word of God says. Marcus is a, a really sweet guy, the gentleman I talked about, who has these dreams. And I don't know that he means anything. I don't want to judge him or attack him. I'm just telling you what he said publicly. Listen to the dream I had and make sure you tell every Christian about this dream. God said, the word of God says in Jeremiah, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my names saying I have dreamed a dream. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Now, are you calling Marcus a liar? No, Jeremiah did. He said, when they say they've had dreams, be careful. You don't tell me what the word of God says. You're telling me what your dream was and you got 67,000 people following you. Are you joking me right now? Are you just following people aimlessly? So this precious gentleman who meant well, I'm sure, who I'm not attacking or trying to hurt, was simply not prophesying by the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God in the Old Testament came on them. Okay? Now, in the New Testament, the Spirit of God, according to the Word of God, is not coming on them. The Spirit of God is in you. It's in you and it's in me. And by the way, if you're born again, Spirit-filled Christian, John, in his letter, wrote clearly that you are God's anointed. You are anointed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't follow it up with if anybody corrects you or critiques you or confronts you, they're attacking you. Never said that. So what is prophecy in the New Testament? The Holy Spirit inside of us, inside of us, 
speaking the word of God. He doesn't get it wrong. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change dates. If he said it, God said it, that settles it. So when the Spirit of God is speaking through you, it's going to line up with the Word of God. That's what prophecy is. And my daughter said to me, Mom, everybody wants to be a prophet. We go to church and there's schools of prophets and there's uh, prophetic messages. Everything's prophetic now. Prophetic message, prophetic conference, prophetic schools. And you know what? Let me ask you something. Not tell you, ask you. When the Holy Spirit came to live inside us, who is the kingdom of God inside of you, the Bible says in the letter to the Corinth church, there were nine gifts that came with the Spirit. You know, gifts of wisdom and words of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gifts of healing and prophecy. Well, if I'm sitting here prophesying because the gift is being ignited accurately, and my girlfriend, Anne-Marie, who's very dear to my heart, has received the gift out of the nine gifts of the Spirit of healing or words of knowledge or words of wisdom. I can't teach her how to operate in my gift. She's got her gift. My gift is by the Holy Spirit. So how can you come to school and I'm going to teach you how to prophesy? I'm going to teach you how to prophesy? And I know, oh, well, it says, you know, you know, that you should long to prophesy and do not despise prophecy. I don't despise prophecy. I despise fake prophecy. I despise people telling the church of Jesus Christ, innocent newborn Christians, that God said this, read my lips, when he didn't. That I despise, and that's why I'm here today not to attack anybody. So Mr. Marcus Rogers, God bless you. Um, I'm sure you didn't mean any harm, but Biden is the president, and I'm not too wild about that. But however, Trump is not in. And do I think he's getting in? No. Do I think he's going to come in 2024? I think Mr. Trump would like to see Ivanka get in in 2024, and that's probably, if you're watching and listening, his plan. What concerns me too at times is when the prophecies come out, and I have a couple of them here, I want to cover this, and again, I don't want to make anybody mad, but I want to be honest. Um, there was another gentleman, his name is Chris Zoon, he's so cool, he's such a nice gentleman. He means well. He was standing in Washington near the White House, and he clearly said God, he's very well known, God told him that President Trump would regain his place in the Oval Office on the 20th. He said, I'm not leaving. I mean, you can go watch everything I'm saying is on YouTube. Everything. I'm not saying anything, talking out of school or saying things against people. I'm telling you what's on YouTube. He said that God told him not to leave because Trump is going to get back in. I mean, I wrote it down. His name is Chris Yoon. Very nice man. He's an Asian gentleman. Young guy. God told me that Donald Trump will be the president. He didn't say 10 years. He didn't say 21 days. He said, God told me he will be the president. And I'm not leaving Washington until the 21st because he's going to be back in. Well, he didn't get back in on the 20th. So this precious man prophesied wrong. Not only wrong, it wasn't God. Again, when the Holy Spirit is operating in the gift of prophecy within you, he doesn't make mistakes. Could it be, uh, let, me, let me say this too, Mr. Robinson, Pat Robinson from the 700 Club, wonderful man, wonderful man, good man, many years. But he said publicly, I'm reading the publicly word several times that God distinctly told him that President Trump would get the next four years. Cut and dry, not later, not 25 days later, not a military coup that's gonna upsurp what's happening. And no, God said he would, that's what the gentleman said. Uh, Kat Kerr, and we're gonna talk about that later. Oh, you mentioned a name. Yes, I'm going to mention that name. Mark Taylor, very nice fireman, great guy, wrote a book about the prophecies. 
you know, started getting on programs and just prophesying like this. He distinctly, I watched him say to the interviewer, Trump will do the four years by a landslide. He is in. God told me that. Uh, Jeremiah Johnson, we're going to talk about him a little later because he repented. Mr. Sid Roth. I interviewed, I was on Sid Ross program 20 years ago when he didn't even have a, a, a station. Wonderful man, great Jewish messianic Jew, God bless him. But he said the same thing and had a group of people on that all claim that God has, distinct, are you catching what I'm laying down here? That God distinctly told all of them, this group, we're all prophesying over one another, that God said that this is the way it's going to go down. Now let me tell you what the scenario is. When we say God said something, don't say anything. Don't bring it up. Don't question it. We said God said it. That's it. That don't go with me, folks. So now, especially in the end times. So now, is here was the scenario, and here is the scenario. That what's going to happen now? is that God has planned a military Christian coup, coup, whatever it's called, to gather together and we're going to throw Biden out. Sounds like Hananiah and, and Jeremiah in the old days. And we're going to throw him out, which <laughs> I'm not overwhelmed at him being the president anyway, if you want the truth of the matter, but that's another thing. And we're going to come in and we're going to replace Trump again, and he's going to, we're going to take all the evil people out of, this is all over the place, folks, this is like massive. Uh, we're going to take all the evil people out of Washington, you know, Pelosi and all the names they throw, and we're going to put them on a barge, this is what they believe, on the outskirts of Guantanamo Bay, and they're just going to stay there, and Trump is going to come in, and he's going to be like a new messiah, and they're not saying, they didn't say he's going to replace Jesus, but for the way it sounds, and he's going to clean everything, and Washington's going to be clean, and everything's going to be fine, sounds exactly the story I told you by Hananiah and Jeremiah. It really does. Again, it's in the Bible. There's an organization called Q. They too, and now they're very disappointed, very disgruntled, and they're all kind of breaking up. If the truth be told, they're very upset because Mr. Trump was supposed, they claimed, I don't even know if it's Mr. Trump's fault, all this craziness, that he was going to come on the emergency broadcasting network on the 20th, and then they were going to just turn everything upside down. So Q was all ready, and Q wanted to take, this is crazy stuff, Q was going to take all the swamp out of Washington after they put Donald Trump back in and put them all on a barge, and in some of the people that are in Q that are not Christian, we're going to hang all these evil people. Let me ask you a question. Let me, let me just ask you a question. When you're listening to all this, because I won't, I can't do it, folks. I can't live off everybody else's throwing stuff out. Do you ever hear the blood of Jesus? I watched hours, very rarely, if ever. It's not even mentioned. What about Mr. Biden, who is not my favorite choice, I'm here to tell you, but... Didn't Jesus die for him? Didn't he die for him too? So when all these ugly comments are being made, did you hear about salvation for these people? So Jesus Christ is so mad at their evil that he's letting people, prophets, come on and judge him. And I'm going to tell you the things I've heard said. And they're all going to hell in a handbasket and his blood is not going to reach them. They're not going to get saved. He doesn't want you to pray for him. He just wants to squash him according to one prophetess and just burn him up. And they're so evil and they're all going to die. And Jesus isn't in one stroke saying I died for them. I mean, can you imagine me? I was the worst of all sinners. I was really a bad person. I was evil. I can't imagine people saying, kill Carol Kornacki. Take her out. She's this mocking and joking and laughing as Christians at me. Somebody prayed. I found Christ. So my question is, when these prophecies are all this evil is going to be put on a barge in Guat, Guat, 
Panama Bay, and they're just going to sit there. No salvation, no blood of Jesus, no mercy. We're just going to put them out there. Do you have an idea how crazy that sounds? That Mr. Trump, President Trump at the time, respectfully, was going to come on an uh, emergency broadcasting network, and he was going to make a statement, and then they were going to put him back. Do you realize how crazy all this gets? It didn't happen, folks. I'm disappointed, too. But it didn't happen, and it's not going to happen. And if you have to start changing your prophecy and blaming Christians, and we're going to talk about that too, because it didn't come to pass and they questioned you, so you move goalposts and you start accusing the Christians that it's their fault. Mark Taylor, again, very nice man. But when I started to get concerned about Mr. Taylor was when he got on, and this is what he said. This is on YouTube. He said it to... Thousands of people, precious saints of God. He said on YouTube, this is what he said. I didn't say it. I'm repeating it. I feel like I have to be so defensive because people are out there thinking, oh, what are you saying? How could you say that? And maybe not. Maybe I need, you know, to be twanged in the head. But Mr. Taylor got on. I remember he had a hat on. He had his earphones on and he was with another woman. He told people that they, if they voted Democrat, that they were cursed that their children were cursed and their grandchildren were cursed and said it was God talking. I don't ever hear God talking like that. I have never, did not, did not God send his son because he desires that all men be saved? I mean, really? I'm cursed? What if I'm a Democrat and I voted and then I come to Christ? Did, the, did you lift your curse on me? And let me ask you something. What gives you the right to tell me I'm cursed? What gives you the right, anyone, to tell me I'm cursed? And when I saw that, folks, I sat back. I was like, oh, my God, what are you saying? Another prophetess who has prophesied, and I know this woman personally, and she can call me if she'd like. She knows my number. Miss Paula White Kane, who got on publicly on a broadcasting station, Jim Baker, and told people in the camera with that pretty face that if they did not give 35, I heard it, $1,000, 35000 all their dreams would be gnashed. None of their, God has told you that? That's what God said? He said if I don't give 35000 or whoever it is you were talking to on Jim Baker's show, if I don't give $35,000, all my dreams, what is all this? What is all this, ladies and gentlemen? I don't understand. I'm not saying these are bad people, but I don't know about you. You want to do this? Go right ahead. I ain't doing it. God loves his people. We are supposed to protect the body of Christ. These are his sheep. Leaders should be standing up and being honest enough to say, I want to make sure you're not misled. And it's happening a lot now. It's all over YouTube. Are you kidding me right now? It's all over YouTube. Ministers, leaders, speakers, evangelists are coming up and saying, this ain't flying. These things were said, and they said the spirit in them, in the gift of prophecy, God Almighty said this. Now, let me share some things that bother me a little bit. Not only Mr. Taylor, again, God bless Mr. Taylor, I just don't appreciate what you're telling us. And now he's going through a lot because they're all saying, you know, your prophecies are starting to sound like popcorn. Uh, Miss um, Paula White, known her for years, um, nothing against her, but please don't tell people that if they don't give their first fruits, that they're not going to be blessed. Please don't do that, Paula White. And please do not get on, this has 4 million views, and pound and say, I hear abundance of rain, and speaking in tongues, and angels are coming from Africa and Asia. What is that? And God said it is done. God said it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Meaning that Mr. Trump was coming back into the White House at that point. He didn't. So... Um, are you attack? No, I'm not attacking anybody. These things were said publicly. I'm asking you, are you really following this stuff? Do you really honestly 
believe this? Uh, Mr. Copeland. I sat at tables with Mr. Copeland when I was at Orlando Christian Center and never did anything to me, nothing against him. But Mr. Copeland is very well known, Kenneth Copeland, and he told the people that God told him specifically that Donald Trump would fill the Oval Office right and Biden would not get in. He also said that God told him, and this is what he said. Do you understand? I'm telling you what he said. He also said that God spoke to him, and I watched it, and he was to curse the virus and it would die. Well, I like that, Mr. Copeland. Please, by all means, do that, sir. I got family members that were sick, friends that got very sick. My brother Billy was in bed for three weeks, lost 20 pounds, couldn't eat, smell, talk. He was a wreck. So by all means, sir, curse it. I'll stand with you, Mr. Copeland. So he began to curse it. God told him to do it. He cursed it. He said, I am an apostle and I have this right. And he cursed the virus and gave a date. And then it didn't happen. So he came back out. This is what the gentleman did. Please go watch it for yourself. And he said, God told him specifically that he is to uh, pray a heat wave. This is all accurate, what I'm telling you. And this heat wave is going to come in and burn this virus out in a certain area. And so he prayed for the heat wave that God told the gentleman to pray for. And if you check, because this was all investigated and looked into, the place where he said that God specifically told him would burn out the virus, had the lowest temperatures, God has got such a sense of humor, in probably 10 years that week. So what do you say? Well, you know, that's Kenneth Copeland. Well, you know, that's nice, but it wasn't the truth. And God never said that. Do you understand, people? Listen to me. Celebrity is very dangerous because what we do, and I was never into it because I came from the streets. I don't know if I'm bragging or complaining. I came off the streets. Trust me when I tell you that. <laughs> I was never into celebrity. Jesus got on his knees and washed filthy feet and said to a young man who approached him, the young man said, good teacher. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Really? So you don't want to be called good because you're showing the young man, you see the flesh, you see this, but you don't understand there's so much more. And yet you said there's none good but God. Jesus, I think you're a pretty important very, very holy and sacred king. You didn't have to say that, but he did. Humility. When people are so obnoxious and arrogant, I've often said arrogance is the anesthesia f that dulls the pain of stupidity. Arrogance. Arrogance. And you know what's sad too? People get into this, well, that's my denomination. Do you know you just touched my denomination? I didn't touch your denomination. I didn't touch your, well, you're Democrat, I'm Republican, you're liberal, he's conservative, you're Catholic, you're Protestant, you're this, you're Pentecostal. I, you know what, I don't see that in the Bible, all these different things and names for, I don't intend to get up there and Jesus said to me, so you're Pentecostal, you're charismatic, you're Methodist. Well, you're a Baptist, he doesn't care as long as this is exalted and this is your last word. And I want to talk to you about something else. Um, I have a, and you should too. I have a problem when you're on a talk show and it's like, you ready? You ready? I need prophecy here. The cameras are on. You paying attention? Let's do it. And then a question is asked and it is believed that the Holy Spirit is just popping these answers out. 98% don't come true anyway. Or you read the paper or you saw things or a bunch of you all are saying the same thing. And not in all cases, please remember, not in all, there are true prophets. But, and you get up and you're like, you're on a talk, so what do you think's going to happen? Yeah, well, the Lord spoke to me last night or, you know, the Lord spoke to me this night or the Lord said this to me. Well, the Lord, well, he told you all that. What does God do, babble all day? He's just sitting around babbling all day, giving these popcorn prophecies. This is a sacred, holy, majestic God. We're, we're majestic God. 
This isn't somebody who babbles, makes mistakes, and I keep saying it, or change dates and times, or isn't to military Christian coups to overrun. That's not what he does. He has a one-track mind, ladies and gentlemen, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everyone we're attacking and laughing at and mocking and pointing our finger at and calling them evil and despicable, his blood ran off Calvary's cross for those people. He loves them. He wants them saved. You can take all the rest of the political hogwash that I don't think he's really interested in at all, especially if you look over your shoulder at how crazy it's gotten. He's got to be, look at this mess. Have you noticed how people are wrapped up in this? I've got 10,000 on my Facebook. When I'm rolling down, people have uh, wrapped in flags. And that's okay. Do what you want. Do what you want. I'm not attacking you. I'm just telling you. And everything's Trump, 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 Trump. It's supposed to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, when I hear the plan that everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of the prophets were putting forth, this this whole coup, this whole or whatever it's called, it's called by the wrong name, my girlfriend, Anne Marie, corrects me. This whole plan that, you know, that we were going to bring in Mr. Trump and put him back in government and then we're going to clean the swamp and put him on the, the, the barges and all the evil would be taken care of and everything was going to be take. I'm thinking to myself and me and my girlfriend Annie were talking, well, do you think that's going to stop abortion? Do you think that's going to stop fornication because somebody is in a government seat? Do you think all the evil... It sounds to me like what's happening is people are acting like this gentleman, Mr. Trump, who I like, is going to come in and all the evil's going to be taken care of. And he's going to get rid of all the bad guys. Out, and they're not going to get washed in the blood of Jesus and get saved. No, no, no. They're going to be sent off to die in their sin. They have no chance for repentance. And it sounds like it's almost like a physical Messiah that he's going to come in. And people, why does everybody think everything's about United States? Isn't the culmination of the word of God in Israel? Isn't that what we should be watching? You say, well, we have to live here and God hates evil. He'll handle it. When he comes in the sky, the way everybody thinks we're going to fix it now, if we get the right guy in, in office, when Jesus Christ comes, as the lightning comes from the east to the west and the sky breaks open and you see him and he comes with the host of heaven, he'll take care of the evil. He'll be the judge. He'll clean the swamp globally, not just in America. It's like every prophecy is about America. And, and hey, I live here and I want my children to be able to live and to be uh, in a place but I have to teach them that they may have to go through things. I may have to, I teach them that this is the truth, that you don't prophesy your own visions and dreams and hopes and then spew out vengeance against those that oppose you. Jesus Christ distinctly said, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what bugs me too, this whole new military sound in the, in the, in the body of Christ, or the evil, we're going to get him. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, merciful, blessed are, are those who are pure in heart. Pray for those. He said, you heard it said, hear me, please. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Well, this is what I say. Love those who despitefully use you. Say all manner of evil against you. Pray for them. Don't re repay evil with evil, but good Pray for them that are lost. But that's not, have you read the stuff people are saying on, about other people? And have you seen how it has divided us? Are you watching that? Anyway, I want to talk about something that, you know, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for, but I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. And uh, then you can judge me later if you'd like. I won't be mad at you. There is a woman who has become very popular. Her name is Kat Kerr. So you're going to get on her. No, I'm going to tell you what she said and what she prophesied and some of the things that concern me. Now, if you want to borrow this, you can, but I'm not. I'm not. Miss Kerr seems like a very nice lady. She's never done anything to me. I don't have anything against her. She has built her ministry on claiming that she goes to heaven constantly. These are her claims. Please go on YouTube because these are public claims. She sits on God's lap and eats ice cream cones and strokes his beard. Do you know what a following this woman has? 
um, Jesus is buffed and drives a motorcycle. She goes in time capsules. She said all of this. Go look. In time capsules with God and they go through time. The Holy Spirit is blue. He told her to call him Cupid and told her to dye her hair pink. There are jello villages and towns in um, heaven. This is because she goes all the time, all the time. Um, and, you know, that's what she says. Um, and also, uh, Christopher Reeves, who died having had a terrible accident, fell off a horse, he used to play Superman a long time ago. He's up there teaching people how to fly. And Jesus and God sit at big tables with pizzas. This is all there. Go look at it. And they like to watch John Wayne movies. And then she tells you who's in heaven. It, you know, it almost sounds like necromancy, communicating with the, she saw Whitney Houston there, and these are the people that went to heaven. And she's up there pretty regularly. And she recently also got a group together, and that's cool, whatever melts her butter, and they all claim the same thing. Trump was going to be 2020. They never said 2024. They, they changed the date so many times I became, it was like so confusing. And recently she got on, Miss Kerr, respectfully, she got on and she told us that God had spoke to her clearly to, and she showed you a map of a hurricane or something that was coming in the Nashville area. And she told the people that God had spoke to her and that we're supposed to do this. And we cursed the hurricane because God told her. And she's got that authority because she's always up there hanging out with him, eating ice cream cones on his lap. Are you joking me? Isaiah couldn't even get up off the ground. Paul wouldn't tell you what he saw when he went there. But we eat ice cream cones on his lap and stroke his beard. And Jesus is buffed. Oh, my God. Anyway, she showed us the map, you know, and that's cool. That's what she wanted to do. She showed you a map, and she said, God said that you're to pray on, and this hurricane, not hurricane, I'm sorry, tornado that was coming, she was going to, it was going to stop, just like the virus with Mr. Copeland, who I think meant well. And she said, it's done. It's done. God told me it's done. The next day, it had totally devastated, tore houses apart. 24 people were dead. You said, God said, is anybody getting what I'm talking about here? This isn't about attacking people. The Bible clearly tells me to judge prophecy. The Bible does not tell me I am touching God's anointed or doing his prophets harm when I see something that's wrong and say to the people I love, this is just not cooking. Are you serious about all this? Miss Kerr got up and I watched this day before yesterday. I watched hours of these things, so I'm not talking out of the side of my mouth. Miss Kerr got up and she got on the Christians and told them, for seven minutes, I listened to her talking as God. I almost started crying. I felt so bad for the, for the holiness of God. Sef, at least set four to seven minutes. She said, I am God. This is your God speaking. These are his words. She started to talk about pulverizing Biden and how uh, those that repent for false prophecy she covered, that you stand back, there's no retakes, and, and then... If you did this, you're going to be destroyed and all these people. And venom was, I watched it. Go look at it. Venom was coming out of her mouth. And you think, and don't you touch God's prophets. We are chosen of God. Now sitting there going, oh my gosh, what in the world is happening? Are you joking me right now? Everybody's going to be burnt up and there's no salvation, no blood, no Holy Spirit. See, you don't need the Holy Spirit because all you got to do is tune into the prophets and they're going to tell you what's going on. And if it don't line up with the word and you say something, you get one of these. Don't talk. Sit down and shut up. And if we say it, you believe it. And if you dare to say one single word, if you dare to correct us, admonish us, question us, you've touched God's anointed. So we're going to go around and we're just going to accept everything. 
like a bunch of sheep to the slaughter and just say, well, God said. We're cursed by our vote? And they say, well, you don't understand the Democrats. Listen, you want to hear a real heavy duty one? Put your seatbelt on. I have been involved with sex trafficking, not myself. I have talked to girls, I've ministered to girls, I've worked with girls, I've held in my arms till their snots were all over me from the horrors of sex trafficking. Do you know when sex trafficking is at an all time high? During the Republican convention and the Democrat convention and the Super Bowl. That's when they move the quick. Now today, because of the lockdown, you're not gonna get that. The Democrat and the Republican conventions. Sounds to me like two birds, two wings of the same bird. So, and that's a fact. That is a fact that these children were peddled at these conventions. Not just one, both. So, I don't have to tell you anymore, folks. I'm like blown away. So let's talk about, because I want to let you go. It's already been an hour. Let's talk about, and sounds looks like a lot of people are listening. So I'm going to finish it up. Maybe you can watch it in two parts, because I don't want to leave you hanging. What about the prophets? Now watch this. What about the prophets who get up and say, I prophesied and it wasn't God? Jeremiah Johnson did it. Uh, Chris from Bethel did it. And there's one other gentleman that did it. They got up. I can't remember his name. Time will not allow. And they said, I am sorry. It was not of God. And one prophet said, we get together and we hear each other. And then we start to build this thing. And I jumped on that, and I'm guilty, and I was wrong for doing that. He said it out of his own mouth. Do you know what happened to him? Listen to this. Jeremiah Johnson, who's very well known, he comes out of Florida, got up and talked about how bad he felt that he had misled the people, and he repented. He was attacked by the other prophets. He was attacked. I listened to it. I listened to it. You Benedict Arnolds that turn around and say, thus saith the Lord, and then you turn around and change your mind. It's like, who are you talking to? How dare you question that man's repentance for prophesying according to the word falsely? Not according to Carol Kornacki. I got all this off YouTube, personal research, and the Bible. Everything you heard tonight, I didn't come up with. And again, I'm not telling you things that are secret. And, you know, the game is, well, you're gossiping. No, I'm not that. Well, you're turning. No, I'm not. I want you to wake up, precious saints of God. I want you to go back to your Bibles, please, and read them. And let the Holy Spirit tell you what he has to say. And don't be so wrapped up in politics that the distraction is so strong that the delusion that you're waiting for this Messiah, whoever it might be, to come and save the day when Jesus Christ is coming in the sky to save the day. And he will get rid of all the evil and he will judge the nation. He is the one. You can't get a 75-year-old man to come in who I like and fix it all. And it's all going to be taken care of. And it almost sounds like Jesus is pushed to the side. No, he's not. Yes, he is. I've listened to uh, so much I can't listen. I don't hear about the blood. Why don't we preach about the blood anymore? What, if our, what are young people you're trying to lead to Christ? And they hear all this and they go, you got a bunch of false prophets. I got people calling me from overseas going, and what goes on? And is God not concerned about Canada? Is God not concerned about uh, Amsterdam where there's drug addiction to the absolute loaded? Is God not concerned about England? Is God not prophesying about Israel? Is God not talking about all the nations since he's a God that covers all? He's just talking about one place and one gig and, and, and really, can you see how troubled I am? I'm like, people, really, what in the world is going on? Okay, Miss Kerr, again, no disrespect. This is public. She's got a mess of people, and that's cool. And she says that if you join and give an offering, that you can get a daily prophecy. So God's passing out daily prophecies if you pay for them. What, what in the world is this? And, 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 and it's like a Christian horoscope, my girlfriend Annie calls it. It's a Christian horoscope. So you pay to get in the special room, and Miss Kerr, respectfully, no offense against her, or maybe there is, is going to come in and tell you what God said about you. 
You don't have to read the Bible. You don't have to seek the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. He is waiting to talk to you. And again, it's okay. There are good prophets. There are prophets that are pure, but they're not a dime a dozen and you don't, they don't come out of schools. It's an operational gift of the Holy Spirit. I can't teach you how to prophesy. You paying for that stuff? I'm going to teach you how to prophesy. Hey, Holy Spirit, I'm going, to, I'm going to teach my girlfriend Annie how to prophesy. And that's my gift, but we're going to teach my friend Annie. You can't do that. What is everything prophecy? Everything's prophecy. Can we just read our Bibles, ladies and gentlemen? Can we just read our Bibles and just trust the Lord and whomever is in office, pray for them like you prayed for your 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 queen or or Trudeau or just pray and ask God to touch them and change them instead of pulverizing them. I get on uh on uh excuse me Facebook. I'm sorry, and um my friend who's one of the greatest speakers he's so wrapped up in the political gig right now and the overthrow of the white house and that he told people he's going to block them and delete them if they say anything well they're coming to me going but you guys prophesied so now you're getting blocked and deleted because my prophecy didn't come to pass are you joking me right now i can't do that Anyway, what do you do? How do I know when prophecy is accurate? When it comes to pass, just like the birth, a virgin birth of Jesus Christ. When John the Baptist came on the scene and he spoke that one greater than me is coming, whose shoe I'm not even allowed to unlatch. Not political gigs. You know what I've thought about a whole bunch of times? Think about this. This is interesting. When Jesus was standing in front of Herod, you know what he could have said to him? I said, fed 4,000 and 7,000 with two fish and a loaf. I walk on water and raise the dead. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Do you know, Herod, I'm going to get a group together and they're just going to get you out of here, clean the swamp, and I am going to just come in here and we're just going to do a political upheaval. When he stood in front of Pilate, did he say to Pilate, listen, we got a group together. We're going to overthrow the Roman government. Jesus was born under great oppression. And he lived, died and resurrected. And the political atmosphere never changed a thing. The church flourished under oppression. They didn't overthrow the Roman government. They preach Jesus Christ. And since none of this has come to pass and isn't going to, and you probably say, oh, Carol, you got to wait. Really? Is that what you said? Are you, you got a date or a time? No. I watched a woman prophetess point her finger and accuse the body of Christ of not having the faith that they should have. And that's why these things are not being fulfilled. Are you kidding me? So now you're blaming us? I watched precious, sweet Paula White get up the other night and tell the body of Christ in an open forum. And God bless Paul. Paul, call me if you want. It's okay. I'll talk to you. I'll say all this. I'm not intimidated and I'm being really honest. In a public forum, tell them, it's the Christians who call me a prophecy, a, a, a false prophet. It's the Christians who say that I'm a, a, a prof, prosperity preacher. The atheists don't pick on me. No, the atheists are watching YouTube at 4 million views a mockery against you when you did that whole thing with the angels are coming from Africa and, 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 and Asia. And I don't know what all that was about. This, so now you're blaming the church. And you know what she said? And I'm going to say it. She did go watch it. She distinctly said, and if you, if you're not God, you have nothing to say about what I say. Wait a minute. We're following you. We believe what you say. We trust you. Now you're telling us that we just have to, is she a bad person? No, 
but I don't believe what's being distributed. Is anybody getting this? In conclusion, uh, Jeremiah Johnson, when he got up and repented for faults, for prophesying wrong, and he clearly wrote later that he can't believe how crazy the body of Christ is, he got death threats. He was called a Benedict Arnold. He got filthy and dirty messages from Christians with vulgarity in it because he stood up and said, I'm sorry, those were not true prophecies. They never came from God. We form a type of a club and we all start hearing each other and we start pushing this thing. And maybe the people mean well. Maybe these so-called prophets want good things. But according to this, it's not acceptable in the sight of God. I have a girlfriend. Her name is Anne Marie. I love her. She's a very educated nurse. She works with lawyers. She works with Codwell Bank and real estate. She's a brainiac. She says things. She trusts when I talk. If I say Annie said it, it was Annie that she said it. If I started going around saying, you know what Anne Marie said? You know what Anne Marie Kersey said? You know what Anne Marie said? And she finds out, she has, what is she going to do? I'm not going to say nothing. That's Carol Konacki. People like Carol Konacki. I'm not saying nothing. Carol Konacki's got a little bit of a reputation, and people really like Carol Konacki. I ain't saying nothing. She has every right to come around and say to me, Carol, what you said is false. I never said that. Why did you take my words when I trusted you and use them and attach me to them to tell lies and, and your own dreams and visions and hopes and plans and schemes? Why did you do that? I would expect her to come to me and correct me. I would expect her to confront me because I'm using her name God does not like misrepresentation, and he's very protective of his sheep. And I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, be careful of these various trips to heaven where there's supposed to be unicorns and trains and Christmas rooms. What are you embracing? I think someone needs to sit down with this precious lady, Miss Kerr, and talk to her. And talk to her. Because... You sit on God, that's a little suggestive. You sit on God's lap and stroke his beard and eat ice cream. And then the precious lady said one day she heard laughing when she woke up and it was God. And she said, what are you laughing at? That's a, Go watch it. And he said to her, God, that he's laughing that Joe Biden thinks he's the president of the United States. So God is in your room laughing and telling you that. What about, let me tell you where God is. Let me, let me show you where I truly believe God is, okay? I'm going to show you where I believe that the Father truly is. Here, you want to see where the Father is? I'll show you. Here's where God is. This is where God is. You see these two children? They have what they call blister disease. Look at the one little boy's face. Isn't that what we should be praying for? This is a persecuted Christian. Look what they're doing to her in China. You think she's got time for popcorn prophecies? Look at this. That's where God is. Oh, maybe we should start putting our attention here. Wouldn't that be the proper place to pray, ladies and gentlemen? Has God forgotten these because he's too busy in politics, leaderships? Isn't this what he came for? Should this not be what we cry out for? Or maybe this, ladies and gentlemen. Is this not the Father's heart? And in that day, I will gather the nations before me, the Lord said, in the word of God. And I will separate the sheep from the goats. And they will say to me, I will say to them, I was hungry and you fed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. And they will say, when did we do that, Lord? And he said, when you did to the least of them, you did it to me. And on the other side, he didn't say, so listen, this whole political clue and all this involvement and prophesying and everything you think everybody wants to hear, like Hananiah, whatever his name is, whatever it is, quit it, stop it, repent like Jeremiah. Say, I made a mistake. Don't get up and blame the people and accuse them of calling you names. 
and get and, and, and say that God's going to deal with you and God's going to crush and destroy your evil and your curse. These are prophetic utterances from God. What are you listening to? France is bankrupt. Spain is bankrupt. Italy is bankrupt. Cyprus is bankrupt. And Germany's in trouble. And God's sitting around making up coups. I, what? Military uh, installations with Christians that are going to come. And that's all he's thinking about. This is what he said. Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of them. This is what he said. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the meek. And then people jump into what did he say about pers persecuted Christ uh, prophet? They persecuted the prophets before you. Give me a break. Jeremiah was dipped in, in, in miry clay hanging by his thumbs or something. Harm, touch not. You have every right not to attack or belittle or be ugly, but if it's on a public forum, you have every right to say Carol Kornacki said that the next president would be Tinkerbell. She said God told her. She said what God said. She got all these people following her and Tinkerbell never became the queen or the prime minister or the leader. It never happened. Carol Kornacki is a liar. God never spoke through Carol Kornacki. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to do this. Don't do it. Go back to the word of God. It's an hour and a half. Go back to reading your Bible. Go back to testing the spirits to see that they are of God. And go back to wanting God to reveal to you through his holy word. Most of the people that are following these people don't know the scriptures. So they follow anybody. Should I condemn these people? Should we attack them? Should we badmouth them? Absolutely not. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just stop attaching yourself to their hopes, their visions, and their dreams that are obviously not coming true. It's an hour and a half. We got to go. Why did you do this, Carol? Because I don't like people. Anyone, anywhere, making the body of Christ look foolish. And I'm telling you, it's a time of complete confusion because people all believe this stuff. They jumped on these bandwagons when we're supposed to be living the gospel. That's what we're supposed to be doing, not all the rest. Whoever is in there, the, this is what cracks me up too. We all saw past the last pre president's character flaws. We all saw through his bullying and name calling. And sometimes I just cringe and I voted for him. But then a new one comes in, and we know there's evil coming, but it isn't the person. It's the march in the book of Revelations. We're in the book of Revelations. Joe Biden is nothing more than a pawn. There's so much going on behind there. The man has got dementia. It's very obvious he's not well. But are we to scorn him in evil and say he's going to be pulverized to dust? No, we need to be praying like we did for the previous president and for the other president and for the other president. Because isn't that what the Bible says or did he say just specific things? He said for leadership, didn't he? Let's love one another. Look for yourself, research everything I said, saints of God. You go look for yourself and you decide. You decide what I said here today. You make the decision. I love you. I hope this has helped you. I really honestly do. And remember, the word of God is the last, first, final, eternal word. God does not change his mind. He does not move the goalposts. He is not into military, Christian, aggressive warrior behavior. Blessed are the peacemakers. He will come, folks, and when he gets here, he'll judge problems all over the world, not just the United States of America. May God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he uh, give you peace. Somebody wrote something and I wasn't quite sure what it was. And I pray that you will seek the Lord while he may be found. Humility. Humility, children of God. 
Go back to praying for those who hate you and despitefully use you. Get your junk. Remember, when you type that stuff up, when you say all that stuff, the Holy Spirit sees every bit of it. Every single bit of it. You have one Savior, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Jesus Christ. You have one Messiah who will judge evil. His name is Jesus Christ. And the only thing I'm guilty of here today to those who would be the naysayers about this telecast is telling the absolute truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. I love you. God bless you.